Hello, hello, everybody. This is Trisha Dyka with The Happy Empath, and I am very, very happy and honored to be sharing this with Ruth Kent. And we are going to be talking today about power thinking versus positive thinking and hanging up on stinking thinking, which this is going to be a very interesting conversation today. <laughs> Now, Ruth retired from 47 years of health care, which included 41 years as intensive care trauma nurse in 2015. At that time, she moved into full-time business. She had created Grounded In, offering individuals tools to restore sustained balanced health and well-being. The tools are the Emotion Code, Body Code, Success Together program, Nikon Wellness Business and Technology. She had the honor and joy of teaching the Emotion Code Seminar for five years throughout the USA and South Africa. She is also an author and speaker. Ruth also enjoys her role in life as mother to her daughter, Nicole, and her family. Ruth is frequently heard to say, I am blessed and highly favored. She truly enjoys life and every opportunity life holds. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, welcome. And I also want to share with everybody, this woman went through a, she has helped me through some serious, serious things in my life. She walked me through <laughs> and helped me clear uh, when I was actually going through cancer. So I have just, I can't even thank you enough or no. how I can highly recommend you. Well, thank you. Thank you for honoring uh, our friendship and to also allow me to be there. Um, you know, when people are going through things, um, they want to feel safe. They want to yes. trust that person. And, um, you know, people say, well, you know, what do you do? And I said, love, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, um, that's probably the message that uh, really I want to an, ignite this conversation with, as well as hopefully lead people with, is keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. And um, for years, <clears throat> you know, if, honestly, if I added up all the retreats, the books, um, motivational speakers, mm -hmm. uh, personal coaches, um, oh, you name it. Uh, with no exaggeration, I probably would have been into 275000 $300,000. Yeah. Was it worth it? Yeah. But how can I help you to keep it simple and get there faster? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and do I have it perfected? No. No. But what are some of the basic tools that I do every day that I share with my clients every day that they come back and, to me and go, oh. You know, in fact, it was so cute. One of my clients they sent out, you know, now nobody's talking with each other because of the virus yeah. and such. But um, <laughs> well, I mean, they're talking with each other, but not face to face. So there was a group message sent out in the family. And one of the girls responded to one of the other daughters in the family. Oh, you're sounding just like Miss Ruth. <laughs> so <laughs> sooner or later, my repetitive, you know, encouragement does. And it's not that I have it all straight. It's the tools that I want to share with people. I want to empower people to know, to step into that deeper knowing, that power thinking, and the simplicity of it, and get rid of the stinking thinking. Um, stinking thinking, I have to give uh, credit to where credit due. Uh, Sandra Yancey, owner and uh, um, creator of eWomen Network. Uh -huh. I borrowed that phrase from her, <laughs> but um, thinking, thinking is the negative negator, you know, whatever you want to call it, shadow, um, 
yeah, it's, it's not going to get you the results you want. Okay. Definitely not. And so I like to sit and receive and prepare as I, I do a talk. And there's a couple things that I would like to share um, and share some of the resources as well. You know, I've often said, I'm, I'm probably not the smartest cookie on the planet, but I have a lot of resources. And yeah. one is, that I'm finding out is also within me. Mm-hmm. When you stop and listen, stop and be silent and not entertain the stinking thinking, there can be a whole file of infinite yeah. solutions, infinite possibilities. Okay. So, um, but the other thing is also um, when you have a situation, whatever it may be, instead of feeling helpless, go with, help me to receive exactly what it is that I am to receive. So the power of thinking, one of the books that I'm going to be talking about, there we go, (laughs) is uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eckert. And I'm going to briefly read this because I think it just explains it better than I could. So what is the difference between power thinking and positive thinking? The distinction is slight but profound. To me, T. Harv Eckerd, people whose positive thinking, people who use positive thinking to pretend that everything is rosy when they really believe it's not. With power thinking, we understand that everything is neutral, that nothing has meaning except what we, the meaning we give it, very important part, and that we are going to make up a story and give something its meaning. This is the difference between positive thinking and power thinking. With positive thinking, people believe that their thoughts are true Power thinking, recognize that our thoughts are not true, but since we're making up the story, we might as well make up the story that supports us. We don't do this because the new thoughts are true in the absolute sense, but because they are more useful to us and feel a heck of a lot better than non-supportive ones. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about that and I thought, what are some examples? So I was thinking about um, when I started my business. I was positive that I had something that was here to help people. And I was positive that I, if I saw enough people that, what do they say, the thirds? You know, I knew all the statistics. Well, then I shifted that. I, I, like I say, I knew all the statistics, you know, Um, do what others won't do, carry out a worthy idea. I mean, I had all that. So then I shifted. And I went into more power thinking. And All of a sudden, it was like building a relationship right there with my client that was going to go into areas that I had yet to know. Mm. And the power of thinking was the connecting to the deeper knowing and that I truly didn't know what this person was going to do or not do. But you see, when I went into that session and was completely 100% in that space and time to give my highest and greatest good, and that I felt that this person was going to receive love, receive whatever they needed, okay, 
all of a sudden I started seeing different results in my sessions in the, you know, it was like referral. Yeah. And in fact, um, I'm very blessed that um, 85 to 90% of my work has been referral. Wow. The power that seed, the power of that seed has, a, has, has continued to know. Yes. And um, there's also a, a quote that I, I like. And this is another book. I love books. <laughs> but um, also to get to the power of thinking is be able to ask yourself questions. You know, T. T. Harv Eckert says most people don't get what they want because they don't know what they want. Yeah, it's true. It's really and I, true. I believe part of part of power thinking is knowing what you want. Mm -hmm. Going back to that shift in how I did business, I listened to Eckhart Tolle's Power of Now for six years. I was going to get it <laughs> down bad. <laughs> I was going to figure this out, by golly. And like I say, I want to expedite your process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you definitely do. You definitely yeah. do that. So what I, I, the nugget I received from that, he has one section in the book where he says, close your eyes. And he says, Right now, this very moment, do you have any anger, doubt, fear? Right now, this very moment. Right now, that very moment. He said, the minute you have a thought, you're in the before or the after. So that was part of my power thinking as well, to be in the moment and to be my best. Yes. And to don't... moment. Go over it and say, well, you should have, could have, would have. No, you did your best. And if you feel like, okay, um, oh, that didn't, well, you have a moment right there to make it right. Do it then. So this power of thinking, I started asking myself some pretty powerful questions. And... Um, that's how I got back to this book again. But the ability to simplify means to eliminate the unnecessary so that the necessary may speak. I thought that, that's so true, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hans Huffman was, a, I should give recognition to who said it. <laughs> but um, when you have a lot of head talk, just stop and say, so what do I want? What, what would make me feel expanding, as Mary Morrissey says, expanding or feel good? Yeah. I, I actually going to share something about expanding versus contracting. And this is because of the situation we're in. And a lot of people are running mm -hmm. on adrenaline and fear and cortisol, which we all know lowers our immune system. Yeah. Um, there was a big to do about toilet paper. And I was like, I don't need toilet paper. I don't need it. It's okay. And then I came home and realized I didn't have what I thought I had. And <laughs> I called, I was on the phone with my little sister and we were just having a little chat. And she's like, she started Googling like where I could find toilet paper in my area. Because mm -hmm. I had already gone to a couple of places that night and they were out like wiped out, wiped out. And I got into the fear and the lack and the scarcity. Mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night, yours truly was in her car running to another store. I got there, there were three packages left and people were all fighting for these three. I ended up getting one, but it was insane. I got in the car and I said to my husband, this is insanity. I am so choked up with this right now. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I said, I said to the universe, cause I was like, 
I'm done. I, I, I need to go to bed. I need to be done with this day because I'm wrapped up. This is where I chose to say, I'm done with this. Here you go. I currently need, because I didn't get involved in that rush out and buy, I needed chicken because I was running low. And I needed to figure this out. And I said, please help me to, to go to the places that are full. Mm -hmm. Knowing, intuition, power. I got up the next morning and I said, I'm not going down this road. I'm going down this road. So I sat down, had my coffee. It was early in the morning. And I just started getting hits of the places to go. Mm -hmm. So I said to my husband, we need to get these things we're going to go here for them. And we need to get the chicken. We're going to go here. Both places packed. However, if I had stayed in that stinking thinking of fear and lack and scarcity, I would have never heard the stores to go to for this. This is just a perfect example of exactly, exactly. what you're saying. Exactly what you're saying. I, but I would love if you could maybe expand on how to go from that overwhelm terror in your head, those thoughts that are, oh my God, I'm never going to get this. I'm not going to have this. There won't be enough for me, blah, 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 to the ability to listen to the next day of those mm. answers. Well, it isn't something that happens overnight. It's a muscle that you have to practice, strengthen, and choose. Hmm. Very true. And one of the things that I, I would say probably, and it almost brings me to tears, um, that most of my clients I hear is that they forget to ask. Yeah. I would say the biggest thing is help me to know. You know, um, Okay, I have little phrases, and um, they're my strengthening tool. They're my grounding tool. Um, you know, not everybody believes God is man or whatever. Use the words that are going to help you. Just yeah. because I say it this way, just because I believe it this way, doesn't mean it has to be this way. Use it and work it the way that it's going to help you. One of the ways that, you know, you start feeling uncomfortable, you're in a place, and when you do new things, you are uncomfortable. Yeah, true. When this is a new situation. We've never been here before. No. And uh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, but, um, you know, every day it, you know, helped me to know what I need to know be safe, to know how I can help others in this situation, and to be prepared. But say you're, um, this pandemic is over, and some of the people are starting new jobs, or uh, they became creative, and they're starting a new career, you know, yes. whatever. Okay, it's starting something new, whatever. And they're uncomfortable. Something I always say is, and I'll close my eyes so I can hear better, <laughs> you know, is, Lord, help me to love me the way you love me and to bring this love forward. I must say that, oh, probably 50 times a day, <laughs> you know, because the minute I say it, I'm in the place of love. And I'm living life from my heart, not my head. All of a sudden, the stinking thinking, it's like, no, listen to me, listen to me. You know, and it, it's not even, I, I don't have room for it. Yeah. I don't have room for it at that point. And um, so stopping to ask, um, I created a button years ago and it said, stop, pause, and pray. It's the pause that gets you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, practice it, but 
also, I, I really have to say uh, two things. Um, for instance, in my marriage, um, we went to counselors, retreats, we read books. We did everything to save our marriage to make it better. Well, let's say it just wasn't going in the right direction. You know? <laughs> and um, one day I called Dr. Nelson, who gave us the emotion code and body code. And I said, I want to give my husband an anniversary gift. And I want to clear the emotions that are inside me so that I can come from my heart, from love, not, well, he did this, well, he did that, Elizabeth, you know, the yada, 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 yada. And um, he said, okay. So he did the session uh, for me. And uh, about two days later, my husband, who's very analytical, black and white, all of a sudden he looks at me and he says, there's something different about you. Well, I thought I was going to drop over right there. <laughs> because for him to notice something, it was a lot. I wasn't to tell him right away. And about a month later, I'm at the desk and all of a sudden inner voice tells me, you can show him now the session. I handed him the session and he read it as if he was looking at every letter. Now that's not the, again, the way it usually would have happened. He would have looked at it and said, yeah, what's this about? But uh, here he is looking at this. And he looked at me, handing it back. And he said, you really love me. I thought, Lord, what's on that paper I missed? <laughs> 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 and right away, um, and humor is something I, I love to do, but uh, I started breaking into Fiddler on the Roof. I clean your clothes. I make your beds. Do I love you? you know? I'm going, <laughs> okay, okay, come back. <laughs> you know? And it was after that. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because it was from that moment that I realized, again, this tool that I have been sharing with other people and myself, the emotion code and the body code, is not only for physical health not only for physical pain, but it's for all areas of our life. And so, so that we aren't just living life on autopilot, listening to the negavators, but able to hear, choose to stop and be silent to listen. The emotion code and the body code is one way that helps you to get rid of the files that are keeping you on the wrong path. Yeah. Keeping you going to the grocery store you don't want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing it no other way. Yeah. Living in a container this size when you have infinite possibilities. Or, or living under this phrase that I hear a lot, but you don't understand. I don't have to understand. Do you understand that you're so stuck on this that you're missing a whole bunch of ways right over here yeah. on how to do things? So emotion code, body code is one way. Um, daily habits. Oh, God, yes. 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 Yeah. And... You know, we study, I mean, between Bruce Lipton, um, I, I mean, I could go on, um, Joe Dispenza, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it's that repetitive daily, you know, what are you feeding yourself and starting your day off? Yes, a cup of tea, cup of coffee, got it, you know, but are you nurturing 
your well? Are you filling it up? Or are you immediately in the should, the could list? Yeah. You know, I got to do this. I should do this. Oh, today is Tuesday. Garbage day. I mean, it's like, hello. You know, we're, we're, we're like Pavlov's dog on some of this stuff. But let it be as strong to nurture your well every morning. Um, they've done studies with the pineal gland, um, the limbic system, the amygdala. These hold emotions. They, um, I, I was watching CBS Sunday Morning one morning, and we store criticism in the frontal lobe of our brain. Oh, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Where are we storing love? Hmm. It's something you have to yeah. choose and also keep nurturing, keep filling it up. Yeah. And so many times we look outside to get it when we have to fill it yeah. within us first. Yeah, that's so true. It's so true. People say to me, oh, this isn't working. That's not working. Well, what do you do daily? And a big portion of it. And you have said it to me, you know, how, how often, you know, <laughs> consistency, consistency, consistency. If we are not consistent with our daily rituals that affect our mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health, mm-hmm. we do not end up in this power thinking. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, I definitely, definitely attribute a lot of where I am because of you. Mm-hmm. And just recently, so that people understand power thinking, I, I wanted to give an example, another example that I just went yeah. through. If somebody asked me to participate in something and I had said yes, not realizing all of the details that were involved in it. And I went on a chat, which I thought was supposed to be a chat, ended up being a Facebook Live. And I'm on that chat and my gut, my instinct were, you need to go. Mm -hmm. This is not for you. You need to go. This is not for you. So I left and I said, I, I, I gotta go. I, I used to, oh, I can't do that. I'll be rude. Oh, I can't do that. I'll hurt somebody's feelings, Mm -hmm. putting myself last making everybody else, like smoothing it up for everybody else but me. Mm -hmm. I chose to be powerful for myself and honor what I was getting and honor how I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And when asked about it later, I just, you know, again, I chose the power side, the authentic side. This is not in alignment with who I am or where I choose to go right now. Mm-hmm. instead of trying to placate or please because when we placate and please we're giving our power away mm-hmm. when we're honest and truthful and when I say honest and truthful I mean kind as well mm-hmm. we don't want to mm-hmm. be specifically a you know brutal or a, you know um hurt somebody's feelings deliberately that's not it at all no, you, you say it out of love yes yeah exactly that's power thinking that, and that is a muscle that needs to be grown. That mm-hmm. is same thing with our rituals, muscles that need to be grown. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, in this book, uh, the magic and asking the right question by Bill Mayer, he has a whole list of power thinking in this situation, power thinking in that situation, you know? So, um, I was looking at that and I was thinking about this and you gave a perfect example, but be aware of how you feel. Mm-hmm. And one of the books that you know very well that I <laughs> talk about all the time is Boundaries. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, some people have a, a situation because it's talks about scripture and such get the message get the nugget of the message from the book because i don't know how 
age, what age I was at when I first understood what boundaries were. Yeah, yeah. me too. You know, boundaries are not telling somebody off. Boundaries are not saying you better do this. Boundaries are not, boundaries are what's your accountability. Mm -hmm. And when you spoke in respect and accountability for yourself, but also spoke just lovingly, not making it right or wrong, because nothing has meaning, but the meaning we give it. Yeah, you know? very true. And, and so I encourage people to really understand boundaries, understand the accountability you have. Don't look for somebody else to give you that accountability. You be the accountable for yourself. And that is, are you speaking from love? Are you, you know, having kind thoughts? Um, are you thinking of thoughts that are uh, power thinking? You know, um, possible, potential, solution based. Yeah, solution based. Yeah. Or are you trying to be positive and you're carrying around all these? Oh, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's a, that's a problem. You know, <laughs> like how God bless people. I mean, I'm, you know, it is a challenging time, but I got to tell you, I've worked with a lot of people to get in them off the ceiling of fear. Um, some of them almost suicidal, you know, and um, when you hear somebody all of a sudden start laughing at, whoa, I really, you know, really went down a rabbit hole on that one, didn't I? <laughs> you know? yeah. They can laugh and say, you know what, that really didn't do me any good, did it? You just want to go, oh, you know, because that's how fast it can go. So, you know, asking, like I said before, asking for that help. If it be an emotion code, body code practitioner, is it? But when you close your eyes and say, help me through this, that request to the universe, you're going to get it. Yes. So be yeah. open and willing. You know, you've heard that from me a lot too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, say, say I'm open and willing and be ready. Um, talking about power thinking. Okay. I coach a lot of people and I'm, you know, blessed to have the success together program, which is going to be starting up the week after Easter. And, um, I thought, okay, Ruth, it's about time you ask yourself some power thinking questions. So in December of last year, I said, I, I, I don't want to stay stagnant. I want to continue to grow and step into who I can be. So I said, what question am I afraid to ask of myself to grow and to be? You know, let me tell you, there's just been a whole lot of growing over the last couple of months. <laughs> I, um, there are things that have happened that, you know, I, I committed to growing, to be willing. And that's what I want people to do. You know, really step into, don't allow... You know, because if I went into thinking, thinking, and, oh, I'm positive, I'm kind, I'm loving, I, okay, but I wasn't power thinking. Yeah. I, oh, no, you can't do that because, you know, like, for instance, I was dyslexic as a child. I was in the special reading program. My husband passed away. January 3rd, 2017. And since then, I made a commitment to him and to myself that I was going to live fully. You know, his life was cut short. Yeah. And I became an author in two books. And I'm going, seriously? 
Well, then, as the universe wasn't saying, you know, see, I told you you could do it. <laughs> and I saw a side in me that, okay, why not me? The beautiful company, that the publishing company that uh, was the publishing of one of the books, they contacted me to write the foreword in the last book. And I was so honored. And I'm just saying that there's a, a diamond in the rough. There's a book about it. It's a wonderful book, by the way. Um, uh, and there's a, a truly amazing version of who you get to become when you do daily power thinking, hang up on the stinking thinking and literally hang up on it. Yes. But take the time to be disciplined. What is your daily habits? What be aware of what you're thinking. Ask yourself the questions, ask for help and know that your possibilities and who you are are endless. Mm-hmm. Are endless. Yeah. Yeah. Possibilities, if we're open, are endless. It is when it is like I did that night. I literally contracted my energy that night looking for toilet paper and I felt it. Wow. It was when I opened up again the next day that the answers came, that I was open to the possibility of going places I've now normally go. Yeah. That's exactly where I ended up. Yeah. And it was interesting when we stop to focus on, and, and don't get me wrong, we're all human beings. We all go down that negative road. We all get down the rabbit hole. Well, yeah. It is when we catch ourselves that we pivot and refocus that we move on Mm -hmm. that that is it and that is retraining and creating new neural pathways within our brains to start looking for new solutions and new avenues to go down because this avenue you've been down so many times there's ruts in the road yeah yeah 